Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, regular hearing of the Budget and Finance Committee for Monday, September 17th, 2018. I'd like to call this meeting to order, please. If you want to have a conversation, take it outside. This is the only warning I'm going to provide. We have business to conduct here. I expect this room to be quiet. Anybody who wants to talk needs to do it outside in the hallway. Um, all right, so members, we w well, we would have, I would have recommended 6, 7, 8, 10, and 11 for consent approval, um, but we do have cards on those matters, so uh, we'll take the cards and then we'll proceed. So let's go first to um, our multiple item uh, speakers. I'd like to ask Mr. Previn to come up first to speak on his items. And I'll be conducting general public comment at the end of the meeting. So let's go ahead and take the two minutes and multiple items. Mr. Previn, go ahead. Is it two minutes on? Two on minutes, please, yeah. So there are, item, today's a brand new day at the welcome uh, to the new era. It's Eric Previn, Studio City, uh, CD2. Today, for the first time, we have something called agenda item number 12, which is the agendaed item. Uh, but inside of that item, per uh, Richard Williams and the guy from Building and Safety, is 28, possibly 30 separate liens against properties that will be all heard under the one minute time frame that we are uh, experiencing now, which to me falls short. And it has to do with a program that was put into place to move certain items up into various committees. Uh, for example, today, for the record, we have Bloomingfield, uh, Krikorian, and Bonin. That's uh, CD. 11, 2, and 3, and yet we have liens from all of the different uh, districts. So they can't plead, for example, sir, to Mr. Weezar. Everybody loves Weezar, and everybody loves to plead with Weezar for clemency if they feel that they're being wrong. But here, uh, we don't have that opportunity because Weezar is not here. Now, you may say, well, we have somebody from Weezar's office. We can call them right now if you have a problem. But the, we did that, and here comes Koretz. So now the people from CD5 will have a chance to plead their case in front of the great gubernador of CD5. But, sir, I think you see where I'm going. And where I'm also going is, is that by taking, uh, for example, the ones that we were dealing with the other day, which was the vacation of city property. Now that, nobody loves vacating property quietly more than Blumenfield and I, but we have to do it out in the open so that the people can make the various cases. The other day we had something called a, a special number one where wherein there is no agendizing at all. It just gets a VOC, waves it through the room quietly, and if you happen to be there at the moment and you can see it and he agrees to give it to you because he's a little bit um, persnickety about that, Stick then you the know agenda. what's going on. No, I am on the agenda item, sir. This is the problem that then poor Weezar has 12 or 6 of the 12 vacations of city property up in this room. Poor Paul Habib, who is holding up the fort down there over at the Rochelle Weezar fundraising up, they can't even squeeze these people up here in, okay. uh, in public Thank safety. You. So, Thank sir, you, please Mr. adjust those back to the way it was. Thanks. Mr. Herman, please. Two minutes. General public comment will be at the end of the meeting. So stick to the agenda items. So you see all these claims, folks? One, two, three, four, five. They were dealt with in claims, a couple of them earlier, regarding LLC, although Paul Martin Krikorian does not have a legal... It's not on the agenda. Life. Stick to the agenda item or you'll be removed. And when we go to, like, items on items under 12 called liens, I'm here in protest, in appeal, in objection to how the racist, discriminatory, prejudiced building and safety departments gone out and alleged that people's properties are filthy, run down, and eyesores. Now, you're in noncompliance, and I'm referring to the Department of Building and Safety, because your inspections and your over cost of 300% is relatively inflammatory and should go somewhere where the dark side of the moon doesn't shine right up your brown nose. Take for example in Monica Rodriguez. She has a lien on item J for $1,288.56. I object and I demand that you cure and correct this problem immediately. Also on item N, off on North San Fernando Road, a lien for $5,596.28. I demand that you waive the 
over expenses of surcharges of 300% because, again, you're causing financial and physical emotional distress and harm. And then on the other item, off of uh, 119th Street for $1,288.56, again, why is Paul Martin Krikorian, the jackass, using all these legal actions against the public? Fuck you. All right. Uh, members, uh, and by the way, for the record, uh, I'm joined by Mr. Bonner, Mr. Kretz, and Mr. Blumenfield. Um, members, I'd like to propose that items 6, 7, 8, 10, and 11 be approved on consent, if there's no objection. And there being no objection, that will be the action of the committee. Uh, that will bring us then to item number 12. We'll take up the liens. And members, as Mr. Previn alluded, this is the first time this committee has taken up these liens. Um, so uh, this is probably going to be a work in progress, developing a, a process that um, works effectively. Um, but for the members of the public who are here, um, I'm going to ask you to come on up and speak uh, for one minute about your item. And, um, well, well, we'll start with that and, and we'll kind of go, go from there and we'll walk you through the process. So uh, first I'd like to invite up Lakeisha Parker to speak on item number 12AD. Ms. Parker, welcome. I'm, on, I'm here on behalf of my grandmother, Vera Parker, who's deceased. Um, she was not properly notified because she's deceased. So we got these, all of a sudden we got this bill for $1,200. And we're just asking to pay the penalty, but not, I mean, pay the fine, but not if you could waive the penalty. And we would um, like to settle that matter as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so on this uh, matter, ma'am, have you had a chance to talk to any representative of the Department of Building and Safety yet? Uh, yes, I told them. I showed them the death certificate today, and um, they, they said they're going to do a continuance on this matter. And also, they asked, they gave me a form to fill out for possible reducing the fees. Okay. All right. Very good. So then, um, on this matter, what I would well, can somebody from Building and Safety come up to speak about the continuance issue? Because my inclination would be to um, advance the matter to council without recommendation to give uh, Ms. Parker an opportunity to reach resolution with building and safety. And if that isn't successful, then I would ask that you contact your council member uh, okay. prior to the time that it would come back uh, to council so that you can make, you can make, you can inform your council member about this matter and they can take necessary action. But what was the issue about continuance? Uh, so we received some additional information uh, this morning that we need time to uh, review. By the way, I'm Tony Pelias from Building and Safety. Okay. Um, and uh, so we would like additional, we would like uh, sufficient time to review that information. Uh, so would it be necessary then to, well, first of all, how much time do you need? Uh, we're requesting four weeks. Four weeks, that would be fine. So the question I would have then would be should it come back then after that four weeks to this committee or can it proceed directly to council? It could proceed directly to council. Okay, then that will be the order. We'll continue the matter for, well, we will schedule, we'll advance this matter without a recommendation, without a recommendation one way or the other. We will ensure that it is not scheduled in council prior to four weeks from now. Okay. okay? And then in that time, they will review the paperwork that you've submitted and you should also inform your council office of the, where the property is, is located okay. so that they can be involved as well. Okay. okay. Which council office is this one? Uh, that is it's matter 12AD. So that is it's CD15. So that would be council member Buscaino. Joe Buscaino? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, that brings up our next speaker, Nellie Randon.
Ms. Randon, welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Nellie Randon. I'm a property owner, and constantly the city, you know, the Department of Building Safety has been serving numerous um, orders and serving into our rental property. So, like in this case, they serve it to my tenants, but they never notified us. So we tried to resolve it. We went numerous times to the, to the um, department, but they said, call there, call here, come back again, uh, write this letter, we'll call you back. It, it, and we get all the runarounds, and I feel like it's maliciously done because they have access to the, all the, you know, the records, and they should be notified the owner so we can address on the timely matter. And we asking them, you know, to help us, you know, to waive all the interest on the citation. Okay. Have you had a chance yet to speak with anyone from Council Member Rodriguez's office? No. Okay. So, um, and uh, Building and Safety, like to make any comments on the matter yet? Uh, yeah, again, uh, we received some additional information uh, today that we would like time to today. review. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, speaking generally about uh, when, where we uh, send the invoices to, uh, we're required to mail them to the uh, address according to the last equalized assessment rule. Uh, so that's what we would be looking at, that particular okay. issue. Okay, very good. Um, so, again, four weeks, building safety Correct. is sufficient. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so, ma'am, yes. Pardon me, Mr. Chair. This is item 12J. Item 12J, yes. Thank you. So, what I'm going to uh, do is I'm going to recommend that we advance this to council without a recommendation, which means we don't approve of it or disapprove of it. We're putting it before the full city council. But that won't be before four weeks from now. So, that'll give you four weeks to be able to contact your council member, Ms. Rodriguez and go over with her or her staff the history of the notices that you got and, and what the issues are. Talk with them about it, and then someone from her office will be able to make a recommendation to the council about what to do with your case. Okay? So, so, so we won't, there won't be any action today, um, and the recommendation will be or the, this will advance to council without a recommendation for any action, but I would really urge you to talk to your council member to see, because they can go into this in great detail. And if you want to spend time with building and safety today, you're certainly welcome to do that too. It sounds like you've already done that, you know what, and they have the new information that they, they need. So, um, so we'll go ahead and advance it to council without recommendation um, and make sure that we don't schedule it for council any earlier than four weeks from now, unless there's objection. No, just a, a, a question, maybe a recommendation, Mr. Chair. As we try to work out this new process going forward, uh, I'm wondering if we could ask each council office to give us the name of a person in their office we could refer people to. I'm just afraid to, to send people into what feels like sort of a, a, a bureaucratic black hole, not knowing who, and if we can have it in building and safety, you can give them the specific reference or something. Yeah, that would certainly be a helpful thing if we could get that from council offices. I'm not sure if all council yeah. office district staffs are structured that way. They may do it by neighborhood. Um, right. But to the extent that we can get that, it would be much more helpful for members of the public if we could give a specific name and a phone number. But, um, and email. But, but for now, because we don't have that available to us, just start with council member Rodriguez's office. Um, and uh, they should be able to guide you through the process from there. Thank okay? Thank you. All right, so if there's no objection, that will be the action of the committee. Um, okay, I'd like to invite up next Pat Smith. Uh, Mr. Chair, which item? Yes. And I'm sorry, which item? Um, uh, Mr. Smith is here on item 12N. Is that right, sir? Yes, sir. 12. And so that's um, 10249 North San Fernando Road. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. I've had a lot of hardships in the last several years. I couldn't keep up with some of these payments. I would like to take care of the penalties and remove the interest and do the best I can to get these payments done. It's just we had a shooting at the business a 
couple of years ago, and that took a lot of my money on the attorney fees. My mother passed away. That's just where I'm at. Okay. Um, and have you had a chance today since you've been here to talk with Building and Safety, sir? No. Okay. Um, so then again, I, I think you heard with the, the previous two uh, speakers, you also are in Councilmember Rodriguez's uh, mm -hmm. district, that the property address is. So I would ask that you take a moment to talk to the representatives of Building and Safety today while you're both in the same room. And then between now and the time this comes back to Council, please confer with your Council member or her staff, Ms. Rodriguez or her staff, so that they can walk through the history of the case and make a recommendation to the full council. Um, but we'll go ahead and advance the matter to council without recommendation today. And um, we'll set that for hearing beyond the four week margin as well. So you'll have four weeks to work with building and safety and to work with your council member and see if there's a resolution that can be had. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, no objection. That will be the action of the committee. Okay, and uh, okay, I think that was uh, that was it. On um, there was no one else who is a property owner who wanted to. Sp oh, sir, I, I didn't. I don't think I had you. Go ahead and come on up. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't see your name on here. What's your name? It's Clark Parker, <coughs> 4500 Crenshaw Boulevard. Q. Number Q. Okay. Sorry, I didn't have you signed up. But um, did you sign up at the at the terminal in the back? No, no I. Okay, yeah. that's fine. That's that was fine. my Just go fault. go right ahead. That's fine. Sir. I, I think I got here before everybody else did. No problem. I've spoken to uh, the gentleman from Building and Safety, and he said, for whatever reason, they didn't get the information that was basically sent, because I think the person that was there passed away, uh, Rebecca Zamora, uh, and he's going to go back and look at it, and he said he would uh, be making a recommendation that the matter be continued. Okay, terrific. Um, so your council, the council member for the property is Mr. Harris Dawson? Yes. And um, we'll do the same procedure then. We'll set this without recommendation. We'll set it in council for more than four weeks from now, which should give you enough time to work things out with building and safety and your council member. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Was there any other property owner? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Hi there. Calling with regard to address 8001 Winsford Avenue. Um, there has been a lien in the amount of, I think it was $3,000, put on the property. The information from Building and Safety was wrong to begin with. A citation should not have been issued. Um, they claimed work to be done that was not done. And it's gone this far. Okay. I'm sorry. And uh, what was the item number, sir? Which letter? Uh, or what was the That address? was item number T as in Tom. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bonin, this is actually in CD 11. Oh, okay. so. Right. so go ahead, sir. I didn't mean to cut you short. Well, the lien needs to be removed. <clears throat> there was no, there, there was no uh, evidence of actual work done on the property. But it's what they say. They said plumbing work was done. It was not done. They have a really fun picture of a piece of pipe sitting on a hill. But what they don't have is pictures of what was in the hole, which is the original plumbing pipe that the house came with. They're claiming work was done when it, the original work is still here. So okay, well, in, in this case, we can refer you to a live human being. Uh, Trisha Keane from my staff over there, sit over by the wall and get your information. My staff will follow up with you and if we could do the same here and okay. wait for... So, uh, okay, so you don't need to hold that on the desk for today. We'll go ahead and advance it. And yeah, without recommendation. So, sir, you heard what we were saying with the other uh, folks who spoke. Um, if you can speak with Mr. Bonin's staff right now, um, they can go through this whole uh, uh, bunch of papers that you have, see if they can make sense of what the history is. They can work with building and safety and you uh, and see what 
an appropriate recommendation might be for council. But this committee is not going to make a, a recommendation at this time, and we'll set it for hearing f at least four weeks from now in council. So that should give you enough time to to discuss the matter with with staff. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And if there's no objection, that would be the action of the committee. Okay, ma'am. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm here for the 21055 West Ingomar Street, um, D. Number D. Yeah. Okay. In CD3. Um, we originally were told by Building and Safety there was a shack behind my garage that my uncle had built. We were told to remove it. We removed it within finding out that it wasn't okay to have. Um, the first building and safety person we talked to when we got the bill, the $300 bill, said they were going to waive it because my mom's on disability and my grandmother's social security. So they said they were going to waive the fee. And then we didn't think anything of it. And now all of a sudden we have like almost a $1,300 bill and we couldn't afford $300. We definitely can't afford $1,300. We're, my mom was outside just now talking to a building and safety person. And they just said if we can ask for a continuance because we just turned in paperwork to try and either reduce or completely remove the fee. Okay. So your council member for this property is Mr. Blumenfield. Hello. And do you want to proceed the same way, Mr. Blumenfield? Yeah, so you can speak with Jeff in my office who's right over here. Okay. We'll work with you. We'll make sure that there's no uh, recommendation now that so it advances. We'll work with you in building a safety to try to get things resolved. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, without objection, that would be the action of the committee. We'll go ahead and advance to council without recommendation, um, and uh, that will be with a minimum of four weeks uh, from today so that we have an opportunity to confer with staff. Okay. Uh, was there anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good afternoon. You Good afternoon. Are, I'm, I'm Tanya Mackin. I'm here for the property 15821 Foothill Boulevard. Uh, do, do you remember which letter that is? Uh, oh, uh, K, 15821 West Foothill. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. Williams, can you start your time again? Because I was Ooh. looking for the address. Oh, what's the time about? You uh, have just, you have, a, you have a minute to speak, so. Okay. So go right ahead. Uh, yes, I'm here to um, get the fines waived. I, um, I wasn't aware of the ordinance and then I went to the office and, um, you know, got talked about the citation that came out and I um, actually um, complied with what was needed. And on my, it was at that time it was $347 or something of that nature. And then I um, went back to pay it. When I got there to pay the the uh, bill, there was a, a gentleman, Marty Waits, who was there. And um, he was like, well, I'm surprised they gave you this. And um, he said he was going to put it on hold and he was going to take care of it. And so when I came, and then I got a notice saying that it was a thousand something dollars. And I called Marty and he said, bottom line, Marty died. And I tried to um, talk to the, the person who was there. The, he was Marty's supervisor, and he was very upset with me. He was. He said, uh, "You went over some. You went to someone below me uh, to to get this uh, approved." I said, "Well, I didn't ask him. He asked me because I came to pay the fine." So, so ma'am, here's what I want to suggest um, because it's hard for us to get through all of the details of okay. this in the time that we have in our hearing. Okay. Um, so I'm going to suggest that we do the same thing and we'll go ahead and not make a recommendation today, um, but we will advance uh, your matter to the City Council and give at least four weeks uh, for you to talk to Building and Safety, but also for you to talk to your Council Member. Your Council Member is Monica Rodriguez. <coughs> Bless you. Have, you. have you had a chance to speak with anyone in her office yet? I don't know. I spoke to people, but they didn't want to go over this person 
um, I think yeah, no, the, the council office will be different um, okay. than, than uh, it's, you're not talking to a department, you're talking to your, your council member. So what I would suggest is um, speak with Monica Rodriguez's office mm -hmm. and uh, she'll go through that, she or her staff will go through this with you and try to figure out what an appropriate resolution would be. And for all of those folks who have already spoken or who uh, want to refer to your council, who want to speak with your council member, all council offices are on the fourth floor of this building, so you could go and visit now. Right now, when you leave here, you go to the fourth floor to Monica Rodriguez's office and try to set up an appointment to speak with somebody. And would I have to come back here? After well, that, that depends on what the recommendation that they make. So we'll be referring this to council without a recommendation of this committee. So it will be up to the council member to make a, a motion about a resolution that would be more advantageous uh, to you. So that's what you should discuss with your council member and be sure that they understand your situation. And where do I get the phone number and the, the room number? Um, so the phone number, I, I can give it to you right now. <laughs> it's uh, Monica Rodriguez's number is 213-242-2000. Seven zero zero seven, or you could go directly to the fourth floor right now and just talk to the receptionist in her office. Thank you. Okay. All right. Without objection, then uh, that will be the action of the committee. Okay. Did we have anybody else who wanted to speak about a lien matter? Sir, come on up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm in reference to twenty. Avenue. Okay, that's in CD5. So I'm the property owner there. It's a rental property that I own. Uh, there was a wall constructed in the back of the garage that was used for storage, probably a three by whatever the width of the garage is. I was informed by an inspector because my renters were having an effective war with the neighbors next door. Um, an inspector came over, saw it. I demolished it. I subsequently paid the, I have to go back to my notes here. The fine that was levied, $336 in early 2016. I subsequently got a note saying I owed 600 and some odd dollars more, which I then appealed, which I have a copy of here, and I have a copy of all the remediation work I did. Um, and subsequently now it's grown to $2,000, even though I made contact with the inspector's office multiple times. It's been passed on to multiple different people through the course of these two years. And uh, I'm asking that the overages be waived since I've remediated the work. It cost me over $1,000 to do, and it wasn't my doing initially. I bought the house like that. And now I'm sitting here trying to get that waived. Okay. Is that under a minute? Uh, it perfectly Close. under a minute. <laughs> and uh, you're fortunate that the council member for the property is sitting just to my left. Uh, so, Mr. Kretz, how would you like to proceed? Yeah, if you could please talk to uh, Jim Bickhart, my staff person in the room. And, Jim, uh, raise your hand. And we'll, we'll follow up with that. Okay. Right now? Well, you might as well talk to him okay. now. If, but we'll, If you can, we'll, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and then what we'll do is, as with the other matters, we'll advance it without a recommendation, give you four weeks to be able to talk with Mr. Kretz's office, Mr. Bickhart, as well as building and safety, and see if there's an appropriate recommendation that can be reached before council. Okay? Thank you very much, sir. That will be the action of the committee. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sorry, sir, before you leave, um, for those of you who didn't uh, go to the kiosk and uh, put your name and information uh, in there, for the sake of the record, we would appreciate it if you could fill out a card in the back or at the kiosk to indicate for the record that you came and spoke today. Uh, all right, is there anybody else who wanted to speak on a lien? Okay, you were... Too late for this matter, Mr. Spindler. Um, okay, so um, if there's nobody else, then with regard to the remainder of the lien matters that we didn't already uh, discuss, I would propose that we advance uh, the recommendations. Uh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Pardon, pardon Mr. Chair. Yes. There's some items that uh, building a safety. Okay. Thank you. I was just going to ask them that. Uh, yes. I'm glad I have you keeping track, Mr. Williams and Mr. Hale, at the same time. So let's go ahead. There are some amendments and recommendations that 
DBS wanted so, to make. Again, this is uh, Tony Pelias, Department of Building and Safety. Uh, we do have some updates to report on. Uh, for items number 12A, 12B, 12H, and 12AA, uh, the fees for those items have been paid in full. Uh, so we would like to request that it be recommended that the items be received and filed uh, due to payment. For items item uh, 12E, uh, the fees were rescinded upon department review. So we would like to recommend that that item be received and filed uh, because the fees were rescinded. For item 12L, uh, there was a change in ownership of the property. So we'd like to request that that item be received and filed due to change of ownership. Um, and then just to make sure that um, my notes are correct, uh, the items that I have here noted to be uh, forwarded without recommendation are items 12D, 12F, 12I, 12J, 12K, 12N, 12Q, 12S, 12T, and uh, 12 AD, which um, we received uh, some information on this morning. All right, so, so I did not keep okay. notes of everyone who didn't sign up uh, and, and their matter. Mr. Williams has that. So maybe you can just consult with him to make sure that your record is, is complete. Um, I, I can go over it one more time okay. just to make sure that we're in sync. Um, we are going to receive and file 12A. Receive and file 12B. We're going to submit 12D with no recommendation. Receive and file 12E. 12F, submit with no recommendation. Receive and file 12H. 12J, submit with That it, in fact, is disruptive, and so are you, Mr. Spindler. I don't need your help in running the... the meeting, but thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Williams. 12J, no recommendation. Submit with no recommendation. 12K, submit with no recommendation. Receive and file 12L. Submit uh, 12N with no recommendation. Submit 12Q with no recommendation. Submit 12T with no recommendation. Receive and file 12AA. Submit 12AD with no recommendation. Okay, so there's uh, two that I would like to um, submit without recommendation to allow us time to review, and that would be uh, 12I and uh, 12S. I. And 12D. I and which? Uh, I and? S and D. Okay. Without objection? With no recommendation. Okay. That will be the action of the committee then. Okay. And then the remainder are approved. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Spindler, I'm going to um, allow you to speak on the closed session items and number nine. So come on up. <coughs> This is not the time for general public comment. That'll be reserved until the end of the meeting. Okay. So let me explain this to my colleague. <coughs> no, 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 speak to the agenda. No, speak to the agenda. Okay, no, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to, of the meeting. Yeah, I'm trying to translate it into goat to English. Okay. All right, go ahead, sir. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you again for not taking Mr. Spindler's comment when you took everybody else's comment before the item was closed on those items. Now we get to number one. Fuck you on number one. The Los Angeles Police Department are terrorists, Mr. Blumenfield. They're terrorists, and it needs to stop. Please pay Miss Bargan the damages. They lynched her. Then number two, a traffic accident, Starline Tours, Yes, Starline Tours likes to drive buses without covers on them. That's like making tea at home without a goddamn cover. So no, no, let's not settle it. Let's take it to trial so the plaintiffs can get punitive damages and more money. Number three, fuck number three. I have no comment on number three. I do. You're, you're disrupting. It's your first warning. Okay, number four. Rhonda Jenkins, a fine human being, 
Yes, on number four, full damages. Number five, the West Valley Christian Center. Me and Mr. Spindler have repeatedly talked about this issue on number five. Mitchell Englander is a racist. Mitchell Englander hates Christians because he's an Ashkenazi Jew and a wetback for the record. So we do not want white wetbacks defeating the word of Jesus Christ. I want all of you Jews here to raise your hand and take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. It's your last chance. This is outside of the agenda. It's your last chance meeting. to repent to God. His time yes. is up. His time what? is up. No, no, no. I, I, I still have oh, a lesson. Done. You're done. Well, you're I done. Still, but I you're still, done. You're done. Been... You're done. You're going to leave the room if you're not quiet and seated right now. Okay. Is um, Kevin Pruitt here? Okay. So he must have already spoken. Okay. Very good. Um, that will then uh, take, we're going to go now into closed session. So we will begin with, unless city attorney has recommendation request, we'll begin with item, we'll go in numerical order starting with number one. So if you're here on item number one, please stay. If you're not, please exit the room. Item number nine is a motion of Farrell Harris Dawson relative to the approval of the California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA analysis of the categoric and categorical exemption from CEQA pursuant to Article 19, Sections 15301, Class 1, 15303, Class 3C, 15304, Class 4AB and E, and 15332, Class 32, as well as the City of Los Angeles CEQA guidelines, Article 3, Section 1, Class 1. 12, class 4136, for the proposed site located at 1533 Trader Boulevard as a bridge housing facility. An instruction to the Department of General Services working with the Los Angeles Department of Transportation and the City Attorney to enter the property to provide services required to operate as a bridge housing facility and a request for the controller to appropriate funds to develop the site as a crisis and bridge housing site. On September 5th, 2018, the Homelessness and Poverty Committee approved the matter as amended. Oh, and pardon me, Mr. Chair, yes. Mr. Williams, City Clerk. For the record, Central Hollywood Neighborhood Council also submitted a community impact statement after this agenda was published. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Barkley, could you come on up and present on this matter? I mean... I think it's generally self-explanatory what's going forward, but maybe you can talk a little bit about the project itself and the cost. Um, one of the concerns is <clears throat> to ensure that this cost estimate is in fact going to be adequate mm -hmm. and that this isn't the first step towards a longer journey that's going to uh, absorb more of the costs from the $10 million that are set aside for the entire city. So. The, um, that's my principal concern, and I'd like you to talk a little bit about the costs and benefits. Okay. So the costs of the site itself are based on um, a Bureau of Engineering feasibility analysis that was done um, based on, and also um, in the time since El, the El Pueblo project, so that's sort of the first bridge home project, um, was was conceived of and, and had began implementation. We learned a lot, even just from that one site. And one of the things that um, we learned and incorporated into the process of getting to a cost estimate, especially for um, 1533 Schrader, is um, we have kind of a prototype site plan for a 20,000 square foot site that we went through with um, service providers, for example, to make sure that all of the spacing and all of the amenities that were going to be on the site made sense and were going to be conducive to providing services to people coming straight out of encampments um, in neighborhoods nearby to the site itself. And so the estimate is really, it's based on a more realistic, um, more real, not just, just providing 
beds and bathrooms, but on a, a service model that is designed for clients being successful in both coming into bridge housing and also um, having the types of amenities on site and space for staff on site to be able to help them to transition into a permanent housing situation. And so that ref the cost in the motion reflects those design, um, those design considerations. Um, as it relates to the unappropriated balance, the, uh, when the Homelessness and Poverty Committee heard this item, they made some changes to actually include the State of California Homeless Emergency Aid Program funding rather or in, in, instead of the unappropriated balance funding if, if it is available at the time that we need the funds from the unappropriated balance. And so there are some recommended um, substitute recommendations before you um, just for the sake of it, some of the changes are really technical and it made sense just to provide recommendations to drop in. So these, rec these um, number, recommendation number four on those recommendations reflect the change in homelessness and poverty to use the state HEAP funding as an alternative to the inappropriated balance if the funds are available and approved by the state at the time that they are needed. Um, and a further, the original motion, the first appropriations to um, Bureau of Engineering and GSD were actually made out of the unappropriated balance portion of the budget. The, the recommended changes make those appropriations out of the general city purposes portion of the funds being recommended so that those funds can be spent first. Um, we won't touch the unappropriated balance being recommended here unless the HEAP funds are not available once the GCP funding is exhausted. Okay, but for our purposes, we have to assume that they're not going to be available. It'll be great if they are. Yeah, uh, right. But for budgetary purposes, Understood. we're going to That's assume they're That's why they're, they're still recommended here. But the idea is to make every effort to um, go straight to the state funds if we can. Okay. And to minimize the impact on the unappropriated balance fund. Okay, so how? what's our level of confidence that the project will be able to be completed with the appropriations that, we're, that are before us now? I think we feel pretty good about both the the design. We don't anticipate a lot of or any changes, hopefully, to the design that this is based on, um, which is, and also the contingencies that are included in the budget amount to make sure that we don't need additional funding. So there's contingencies in the construction budget specifically and then the overall budget also so that we are sure to um, be able to meet the needs of the project within the funds that are being appropriated. Part of the, um, another recommended change to, um, within the recommendations that are before you is in recommendation eight to add materials as well as staff costs to the costs that are eligible for um, under that recommendation. But that's going to allow us also, that recommendation is really in there to allow us to, um, balance the need to sort of nimbly move funds to um, BOE and GSD as they need them, but also not require us to appropriate it all into those, into those accounts up front so that we can keep traffic of expenditures. We have a plan and we've been meeting with them about getting expenditure reports on a regular basis so that we're sure that we're keeping track and that if there are and, and by categories within the budget so that we are keeping track and if, there, if we are seeing if, if there are some issues with the budget that we're seeing them earlier, sooner than later, to make sure that we are staying inside the budget as, as much as possible. We feel pretty confident that we will be able to stay inside this budget. Okay. Can you speak to the degree of community outreach that there's been? I, we do have a couple of community impact statements. That's mm -hmm. a good indicator that there's been a fair amount. But um, sometimes the cost drivers change, mm -hmm. you know, with community input. So. Yeah, that's a really great question. So Dan Halden is here from um, Council District 13 as well. He's been leading the community outreach, but I'd say just in the, um, that I've been very impressed and been a part of a lot of community meetings that have happened around this project too, um, and they have involved some initial renderings that don't look a lot different from the final design to give people a good idea of what this is going to look like from a lot of different angles so that it won't be a bad surprise and to the most for the most part the responses have been pretty positive okay. right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very I good. don't think I haven't seen any specific design changes come in in response to the community outreach and the, the outreach has been very concurrent with design okay very good uh, members mr. Bloomfield so the 
um, the increases? What, what are actually causing these increases in terms of the materials in the council file didn't have the detailed budget, but if you give us a sense of what. What do you mean the increases between this site and, because we haven't actually started, this is the first well, appropriation of the project, so. I guess we were originally always thinking 1.3 million oh, I see. each. The first, the first two are double, mm -hmm. were double that. Right. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And so it's, there's clearly been a big increase in terms of what we expect these, these to cost. And I'm trying to figure out what, I mean, we have the added question of how do we fund mm -hmm. it all if it's more than double what we expected, but also what's causing this to be so much higher? I think that, well, hmm, that's a great question. I think we were, the initial estimates based on, or the one point, the three was really around kind of probably more an estimate based on um, materials and, and some estimate or idea of labor, but I think we didn't really have a good idea of what a design footprint for a standard site would end up being because we didn't know what a standard site would be. And now as we've done more work with council districts and looking at a large number of city-owned properties and what an average property size might end up being, we have a much better idea of what um, what the sites, what these projects will actually end up costing than we did. We've done, since since the budget was approved, we've done, um, GSD procurement has done a procurement to get vendors on contract for both the tension membrane structure from portion of these sites, but also the modular buildings. And so we actually have, we know what the cost of those, those will be now, and we didn't know that then. So we were kind of going off of different, different types so of estimates, this is, so. This is now sort of the standard cost. It's not gonna be going down each time because we've I wouldn't say that. We, we'll, we're gonna get a better idea of what this, I think what a real um, proto, what, what the, what a standard site is gonna cost with, um, with this particular site, with the Hollywood site, because it looks more like what I think we've been thinking about doing on other sites. It's a flat rectangular site as opposed to a, slanted triangular site, which is what we were dealing with on El Pueblo. And so I think we, and it's also larger. And so we have more, um, more buildings, more sewer capacity, different things that are going, that are going into the cost that we didn't have on El Pueblo. So I think this, this is more of like our ideal type of site as it relates to being flat and rectangular. Um, and I, so I think that this is going to be closer to what we're going to what these sites might end up costing, but we won't know what it actually costs until it's constructed. These are all based on estimates at this time. So we're gonna get a better sense of the actual cost as we move through construction of this site. Thank you. Members? Okay, so you have uh, substitute recommendations mm -hmm. that are Yes. for the members. Um, so I've gone oh, through the I'm description of all of those. The only other one that we didn't talk about was the change to recommendation one, which really um, more closely matches the language that's on the agenda and also what was in the original motion. It's just um, more technical changes to the CEQA findings that you'll be making today. So I apologize okay. for interrupting you. Great, and I apologize on this matter. Mr. Ares, Mr. Ares, um, did you want to speak? I, I apologize, I should have called you up earlier, oh, but um, go ahead and come on up and speak on this matter. Welcome. Thank you. I'll be brief. Um, good afternoon, council members. My name is Eric Adas. I'm with the United Way of Greater Los Angeles. Um, and I'm here on behalf of the United Way and the Everyone Winning Campaign to speak in strong support of moving the process forward today. Um, we were very much invested in the community engagement process. And so I know that there has been a, a really great job reaching out to the community. Um, there also is in alignment the business community the neighborhood council and just various stakeholders in, in the area, as well as a wealth of service providers who are very excited about having this opportunity to have beds in their neighborhood, in their district. Um, so for all those reasons, we would just like to lend our strong support. Hope you all move the process forward, to, forward today so we can get these beds um, open as soon as possible. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. If there's no other questions, um, We'll go ahead and uh, approve the substitute recommendations as modified by Ms. what Ms. Barkley indicated today. So without objection, that will be the action of the committee. Huh? We took multiple items already. You spoke to this item. Yeah, we, no, we spoke to the. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, 
the only other item before us is general public comment. So we'll go ahead and take Mr. Previn first, please. Thank you, sir. It's Eric Previn from CD2. And um, I appreciate the questions about the cost. I did a little math. It's about 40 bucks a night for the 36 months. This is just for the construction costs. So whereas I think everybody agrees we want to do this, I don't know that we can just double and sum the cost of these things without uh, making some kind of a larger adjustment. I know that we've got a nonprofit entity. I guess it's United Way, Mr. Aries's group. I don't know about that. I thought it was PATH briefly. And the more we can disclose about that, the better. Uh, just picking up from the items that I couldn't address earlier, especially the private council one, we're extending um, for two years several contracts with several firms, including Myers, Nave Rebeck, and then we're also waiving the conflict with that firm, Nassiman LLP. And I think the reason why we're um, willing to do that, well, I'm not exactly sure why we're willing to do that, because there was a conflict. They've said that it's not such a big deal. Um, I, I'm not sure about that. I, and then the other one is a landfill item where it's a long-standing matter. We've got a guy, an attorney, coming in to sit uh, in the seat. He had previously been at a different firm, um, and now he is going to be going into business for himself, Wong, and he'll be taking over the city. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Herman. Yes, Daddy. So after speaking to David Zanheiser regarding motion 77 or 63 regarding what is a disruption well no white nigger armenian is going to keep me out of a public meeting to participate exclude me from participating in program service and activity under the american disability act title two or three as brought out by 42 usc 1983 fuck you in regards to item j after these pleasant women were told to go speak to the building and safety inspectors regarding their liens, on item J, the poor woman came out in tears saying to me, I can't trust these white niggers from LA. All they want to do is gouge me in the wallet. And yes, if you got a lien, come here and protest, and especially go to council chambers and say, fuck you. Mr. Spindler. So it's good that Mike Bonin has his head turned and his chair in complete reverse. It just goes to show you what the, the little dickheads. So you're going to have your little fucking little motion tomorrow and your six of you little fuckers had to sign it. Six fucking cunts had to sign that motion. Now, I'm looking, there's only one cunt here that signed it out of the six cunts. And you'd be glad you didn't sign it in the, in the aftermath. And you know, some of you guys come up to me, you know, and you, 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 I'm going to work it out with you, Wayne. You know, we're going to get you your settlement, Wayne. We just needed to tone it down. And then six of you fucking cunts have to sign that thing. That fucking cunt. Six cunts got to sign a fucking motion to be cunts. Little fucking niggers all over the place. Bunch of little Jew niggers got to be all over the fucking place. Little fucking cunts got to destroy the First Amendment. A bunch of fucking Jew fucking cunts. Cunts Mr. that are signing this goddamn fucking our, thing. Our subject matter? Yeah, it is a subject matter. A bunch of fucking cunts. You're a bunch of walk. fucking cunts. Since You're disrupting the meeting. Please ask Mr. Spindler to leave. He's continuing to disrupt the meeting. I'd like, I'd like him to be excluded from the room. For the record, Mr. Spindler is being excluded from the room. All right. There being no other business before the committee, we are adjourned.